Smells like a McDonald's in here. Well, I feel like I work at McDonald's. Take a look at my shirt. I, what is all of that grease splatter? It's called work keto. That means there's grease splatter on all of our clothes. I mean, well, this is how you can tell the difference between the person who's primarily eating the food and the person that's primarily cooking the food. Yours is at a lower level because you're where the food is. Like, you're cooking it. My grease stains are from me dropping the food while I eat it. I... I'm loving the stainless steel container. It's way easier to clean. It's much easier to clean, and it looks better on the counter because you don't have all of that, like, cloudy plastic yeah. in the Vitamix. And it just gets that way, but I don't know. I just really like it. Plus, it keeps everything nice and warm as you're, like, going with it and, you know, getting it going. This is McDonald's coffee, but i got to give it some props, man. This is actually good coffee, right? Oh, you haven't tried it yet. It's good. Trust me. I know. I'm surprised. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2 and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time Charity tries to sneak some meat you'll be alerted to it. Happy Friday! Happy Friday! Welcome to day 41 wow. of the Beef, Butter, Bacon, and Egg Challenge. We're in it to win it. We're in it to... <laughs> <laughs> We're going to win something. We're going to win something. Crazy, I don't Most know. Most crazy. Dressing up like Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy. It was so much fun last night. It was, except for the fact that my our lips were off and that bothers me. I'm sorry, honey. We need a professional, like, person to handle all this we stuff. We do. I feel like we We need have, a Nick. We have that person. We do? It's you. Yeah, but I want somebody else. Somebody else. Yeah. That'd be good. <laughs> Okay, day 41, it is a Friday, uh, Anthony and I have to go cut the church, I'm in the middle of upgrading my computer to the new operating system. How's that going? Uh, it's a pain in the neck because I like to do a clean install, which means erase your entire computer and start over. But you also have to remember to get every file that you have on your computer that you absolutely need. And into a safe place. Into a safe place. And then remember what programs oh that I goodness. like to install and have them back installed. That's and the lot. reason I do a clean install is because, you know, every year, throughout the year, you end up with, there goes the air conditioner, you end up with little programs that you, you don't gum really it up. want, like some kind of like adware finds its way in, you've installed things that now you don't want. So for me, every year, operating system, Wipe the entire computer and start from scratch. Start the year fresh. But when you have 16 terabytes of hard drive space. It's hard that's a to lot. do it. That's a lot. Hard to find space. What 16 terabytes is. But I mean, it's a lot. I can hear the nerd, nerd, nerd jingle yeah. going on. Nerd, nerd, nerd. Yeah, nerd, nerd, nerd. So, and I was up until about 3 o'clock in the morning with Luke L3D. Thanks so much, Luke. And he was helping me finally get my 3D printer going because it's been broken for like three months. I fried the board by touching two points together. So we got most of it going. Now I just need to get like the filament to come out. I think the nozzle is clogged. But we got the board fixed. Everything, I mean, he's just guiding me through everything on Facebook Messenger. So Luke, really you're awesome. so awesome. Yeah, I'm excited to get that thing going because there's a bunch of things I want to 3D print. And uh, Christmas is coming. It, if we can give everybody Christmas presents for that. Well, I was going to say you could make some ornaments. Yeah, we could do that. Um, dinner. You're going out tonight. I am. But I don't have a game and you're leaving. I'm so sorry, but we have a trunk or treat. Oh, that's for, right. For a church. We're actually... Well, this is the city one, right? We're actually serving like the city one, right? right? Because it's like, why have your own... 
when down the street, all of our kids are going anyway. <laughs> so, I mean, that's going to be fun. But they get a lot of kids, like between 800 and 1,000 children. There, There is not enough love for you to get me to dress up as Raggedy Andy and to go, go the city and to and do it that public. Yeah. No, I, I, I feel less public doing it here, even though we've got more well, this family is, here. I was going to say, this is this your is family. This is my family. Right. They're not going to make fun of me. Well, they might. People but in the church are going to make fun of me. People in the city, they're going to make fun of me. Well, I mean, like, yeah. I can just hear it. Raggedy Andy doesn't have a gray beard. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Raggedy Andy. He really is raggedy, right? So... Anthony and I are going to go cut the church. We have two. We have the church and one other house to cut, and uh, I have a beautiful prime rib roast that we didn't even know we had until I we did cleaned not out the know freezer. I had it until I started going through the whole freezer. Clean out your freezer. You don't know what treasure you'll I find. I know I did not pay a hundred dollars oh, for this roast. You're pouring blood on yourself. That's okay. It'll go with the grease stains, uh, beef blood, and oil stains. That that's the perfect keto kitchen. Um, we didn't know we had it. I know I didn't pay $100 for this roast, but I know that that's what this roast would cost today. Especially because it's grass-fed, grass-finished it's a good from thing white oak pastures. That you free, we freeze meat. So, uh, since you're going out, we want to make sure we have everything cooked in time. We're going to sous vide this. Nice. We're going to put it in the sea. I'm going to cover it with a little bit of the Redmond garlic, uh, salt, and black pepper. Uh-huh. We're going to cover it all up. We're going to put it in the sous vide. Set it for 120 degrees. With the sous vide, that's awesome because you can cook this thing for seven hours. And it's not you going anywhere. You are not going to screw this thing up. And that's what we want to do with this cut of meat. We don't want to take any chances. You know, right. when we do the roast, you're getting better at that every single time you cook it. Right. But when we looked at this thing, we're like, what do we know, no, no, will make it turn out perfectly. Now, I know I could do it with the Kamano and I know for a fact that I could do it with the, you know, Rectex smoker, the, yeah. the pellet grill. If people ask us all the time, like, I need to get a grill. What should I get? What is your experience level? Right. So if you want the easiest thing to operate, we're going to throw out the Blackstone. Okay. I'm, I'm going to say like, cause the Blackstone, you can't barbecue on it. You can cook, fry burgers and bacon on it, but you can't barbecue on yeah, it. Yeah. You're thinking barbecue. So if you're thinking barbecue, my recommendation is always going to be get a pellet smoker mm -hmm. because it's set it and forget it. It really is. Um, which one? There's lots of them out there. I love the Rectech. Money's no object by a Yoder, but you're talking about like $2,800, $3,000 for a year. That's, That's a lot the of money. best one on the market. It's made here in the United States. I love the Rectech. The Rectech is stainless steel. Uh, I like the way the whole system works. I like the integrated Wi-Fi, although I never thought I would care about that. I do like the fact that I can literally turn the grill on from anywhere. Yes, so, that's So, like, really I nice. can be on the road, and so long as there's pellets in there, I can be like, hey, I want this grill to be ready for the meat when I get home, and from my phone, hit a button, and that grill's going to start up. So, there's no calling you saying, get the grill going. Right. So, like, you don't know you're going to use that until you use that. Yeah. I uh, used to have a pit boss. The pit boss was pretty good. Uh, I just started getting a little dissatisfied with their customer service with some of our subscribers. We had recommended it and they had some bad customer service and I'm all about customer service and I don't even want to like recommend a company, even though we don't have an affiliation with them. Yeah. I don't want to recommend things that if the company doesn't have a it's bad It's going to disappoint service. you. I've been extremely impressed with the customer service for Rectech. Traeger's got nice grills. There's lots of them out there. They all have the same technology. It's the pellet. It's the little features. What is it made out of? How easy is it to put together? Does it have a flame broil? That kind of stuff. Well, and also the cost. So yeah. like who's having a deal? That's yeah. definitely something that we're going to be on the lookout for for everybody when it comes to like Black Friday, yep. you know, Christmas and holiday sales. Yeah, make sure you subscribe to our channel because we're going to look through like all the Black Friday ads. We're going to let you know what we think are some of the best deals for your keto carnivore lifestyle on Black Friday. You can look for them and Cyber Monday. Yes. Cyber Monday, I, and that's become my deal. We were Black Friday people. We were the people Thanksgiving in our house or in Rachel's mom's house had to get switched 
to Wednesday. Right. Because we were the people who at 2 o'clock in the afternoon were running out the door on Thursday for Black Friday. Even though we didn't buy anything. Well, it was like our tradition together. It started out, we did buy everything because three kids. We had little kids, kids and nephews. And, and you're looking to see, like, where can I save a dollar every right. which way. So um, The but, last couple of years, we didn't buy anything. And well, and I don't even know. I was noticing, and I, I actually got excited as I looked at that, that it looks like they're not going to do these crazy hours the day after Thanksgiving or on Thanksgiving. I'm so glad. I'm really hoping that I'm seeing the right thing. It looks like everybody's going to be able to have a normal Thanksgiving and then they're having sales that, you know, go around it. But we'll see. I just, I thought, am I looking at this right? Does this yeah. look like it's a week-long sale? But online shopping has become amazing. Yeah. And with Amazon now delivering within four hours of when I place my order on some products, I mean... Right. You just can't beat it. You know what I'm excited about? What? We get to go to our son John Paul's house for his first Thanksgiving that yes. he is going to host. Oh my goodness. So in his house, in his first house with his wife, we get to go to their first Thanksgiving. Okay. And I'm, I'm excited about that. All right. And in typical fashion. And then I'm realizing that we're old enough to have a son that can own a house and host Thanksgiving. I know. Well, here's the thing. I think. I'm old. I got to shout out to Michelle, who is the hostess with the mostest. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling that he's going to be helping to make the turkey and she's going to be doing everything else. You know how, right. you know, there's somebody that's a lead cook. Right. And in their house, Michelle. Who's the lead cook in this house? Definitely you. Oh, okay. I mean, I can Just assist. That. <laughs> I do some, you know, like. You do all the prettiness, which I cannot do. Sous chef, you know, do some prep work and clean up. I'm on cleanup crew. I'm going to throw out a roll of paper towels and here's some paper plates. Have at it. Yeah. And you're going to have like themed everything that you got like on clearance last year. So I'm I'm excited for her. Yeah. Like, so I, I'm definitely going to kind of check in and be like, what do you need us to do or bring? Because there's always, especially your first one, there's always something that you forget. I feel like... He may say, can you bring dad to cook? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> I think that um, you'll definitely get the, we're out of ice on yes. the way over there, right? Yeah. Because you, all, you never purchase enough ice. How much ice, leave in the comments down below, do you normally need for a family get together. We have three ice makers in this house and it's not enough ice for four people on a daily basis because everybody likes to take their giant 32 ounce cup and fill it to the brim with ice every, every time, time they get a drink. And then when they're done with that drink and they need more, they dump all that ice down the drain and then they refill it up. I, that's another thing I wanna know. If you, let's say you're in the house and you're drinking your, you know, Two Crazy Keto's insulated flask, which there are more on the way. They've been shipped out, so they'll be going up on the website probably within a week. Yay. Um, you fill it up with ice water, and you drink the water. Now you need more water. Do you dump the ice out, or do you save that ice? I save the ice. And then fill it back up. I save the ice, fill it back up, but add more ice. Because I always need more ice. I need it to be super, super cold. I just need enough ice to get it cold, but I don't want to be left with any ice when I'm done. Oh, wow. That's a real, like, because you got to time that. Like, that's right. You have, to, you have to know, like, on my big 128-ounce thing, I fill it up a third, a quarter to a third of the way with ice, and then I fill the rest of the way. Well, it used to be soda. Now it's either regular water or aha. I'm very proud of you. And... By the end of the day, there's a little bit of ice left, but it's not like halfway through the day and it's only ice and I have nothing left to drink. So going out of this challenge, are you going to continue trying to drink mostly water in that yeah. thing and AHA? Uh -huh? Yeah. I Honestly, the fact that Wawa carries AHA, uh -huh, I'm perfectly fine with that. So I still feel like I'm treating myself, wow. getting my fountain drink because that is my thing. When I go to work, I get a fountain drink. Um, so the fact that they have aha, uh -huh, I still feel like I'm getting a treat. It's cheaper to fill it up there than it is to go buy a 12 pack because the 12 pack is like five bucks. Yeah. And it cost me a dollar twenty nine to fill up a hundred and twenty eight ounce container. I haven't even finished the container. I never finish it. I did finish it when it was soda, like twice a day. Wow. So there were times where I was drinking over 200 ounces of Diet Coke out of that thing. I am so proud of you. But yeah, thank you. I, I you know what? I don't miss the Diet Coke. I like my Zevia back, but I don't want to drink 128 ounces of Zevia either. So the fact right. that I'm having that, I'm perfectly content with that. Let's get back to, oh, the grill. So yeah, they're all good. It just depends on the little features. Um, Rectech, I think, has really good customer service. 
The one thing I would say, just to not extend it too long, but comparing the Red Tech to the Pit Boss, cleanup is easier. The oh. Pit Boss like was a pain to clean. The Red Tech, you can cover your entire drip pan with aluminum foil, and then when you're done, rip it off and put a new one in there, and it doesn't affect the performance. Covering the Pit Boss with aluminum foil affected the performance. So now, where does the Kamado Joe rank as far as if you're needing it? Okay, so money again, no object. Okay, uh, I would get the uh, Big Joe, which I wish is the one I would have gotten now. But the Big Joe is twenty five hundred dollars. It's that's it's, a lot of money. It's literally a thousand dollars more than the the middle Joe. I think it's called the the classic Joe. Th I have the third one, so you can get the second one and save a lot of money, like okay. a significant, like hundreds of dollars buying the second generation. And then you could later on, all they did was add in a couple of features. You can actually buy those features and add them on later on. Okay. And be at the same amount of money, but not lay it all out at front. So if you want the Big Joe, I think you can get the Big Joe 2. I want to say it's like $1,900 instead of $2,600. But if, you're, if it's going to be your only grill, I would get the Big Joe because that's big enough to cook a giant turkey. That's big enough for a full brisket. Whereas the classic, I couldn't even fit a full pork belly in one slab. I'd right. have to cut it in half. But for what I'm using it for, which is Perfect. smaller cooks and charcoal cooks and everything else, um, I think it, the classic Joe is perfect. But money, no object. You get the big Joe. That's first of all. But there's a learning curve to it. It's not set it and forget it like the pellet grow. Right. I'm enjoying the learning curve, but... With beef being almost twenty dollars a pound, you may not want to experiment have a learning as much. curve on piece of beef. Yeah, that's why we've been doing a lot of the roasts and things like that, cheaper cuts of meat. But you don't have to just cook expensive cuts of meat on no. it. You could do burgers. We, we'll probably do chicken yep. and pork chops yeah. on it. I think would be good. Yeah, and that's why I got it because sometimes I just want that charcoal cook instead of cooking on a pellet grill. So it, it's just a learning curve. The one thing I would say is I actually bought this accessory for it, which you hook up down below, which will manage the temperature for you. Ooh, nice. And I actually like doing it just by touch instead. So like I'm actually going to take that off and sell it because it's not to me as easy. It's funny. I watched that Smoking Dad barbecue and he was like, Set this here, set this there. There's no temperature thing or anything. Put your hand on the dome, you'll know the temperature. I did better with that than when I had a device telling me what the temperature of wow. the piece was because I felt like I was chasing temperature more. So oh my goodness. something interesting to, to know about it. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get off. I gotta go wake up Anthony because I'm like 30 minutes late. We're gonna cover the salt, get it into a silicone bag, get it in the sous vide. When we come home, when you get home, we fire up the Kamado on a really hot, 600 degree flame, sear the whole thing 20, 30 seconds on each side, and we will have a perfect prime rib roast. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is take a little bit of Frank's Red Hot, and we're gonna rub it into the meat, just a couple of teaspoons. This will help adhere all of the salt and pepper to the meat. So next we have the Real Salt Organic Garlic Pepper. Look at how much I have used of this container. That is just during beef, butter, bacon, and egg. I've used almost a half a container. So we're gonna go ahead and cover the entire piece of meat with this and then rub it in. Okay, from here we're gonna go ahead and put this into our silicone bag. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get as much of the air out as possible. So what I do is I fold it over and kind of press the air out. Keep it like that. Then we take our slide top and we slide it in. Now, I know you may be wondering why I'm not using the plastic, like the vacuum seal bags, in order to cook the roast. And that's because the more research we've done, the more I've learned about the harmful effects of cooking in plastic. We try to avoid it as much as possible. I mean, you can't avoid it completely. Sometimes you're gonna go to restaurants, they're gonna heat things in plastic and that kind of stuff. But whenever possible, we do try to avoid cooking in plastic. That includes cooking in the microwave, cooking in the sous vide, things like that. So 
We invested in silicone bags. I will leave a link for them down below. You can buy them in a bunch of different sizes. They're very easy to clean. We simply turn them inside out and wash them. They work really well. So whenever we cook in sous vide, we're gonna use this. Now we still will use plastic occasionally for storing cold foods, but then when we wanna heat stuff up, we transfer it over to glass or something like that. But even the stuff for storing foods, like in the refrigerator, slowly have been walking away from the plastic because even the plastic, it gets smells and discoloration and, and glass just works better. So let's go ahead and put this in the sous vide. So I have my Anova sous vide going. It's at 120 degrees. Uh, this is the Wi-Fi version, but I can't get it hooked up to my Wi-Fi because we only have uh, the 5G in the house and it won't connect right. So I bought this container for the sous vide uh, on Amazon. I'll leave a link for it down below. It's simply like a flower container and then you can buy this lid and it keeps everything in there. So all we have to do now is put it in here. Okay, so we have the roast in the silicone bag. Sometimes you're gonna have to put a weight on top of it to keep the meat from floating up to the top, uh, but this bag is kind of holding it in place and then I have this top which helps prevent evaporation and also keeps the water at a better temperature. It makes it a little bit easier to uh, maintain everything. That's keeping everything down so we are good to go. So we can just let this go until we're ready to eat it. You're gonna cook this for the size of this roast. It's probably gonna take a couple of hours at minimum, but it's eight o'clock right now. We're gonna let this thing go until probably at least three o'clock and then throw it on the grill and be ready to go. That's the beautiful thing about sous vide is you really can't overcook it because you're gonna set your temperature for what you want. It's gonna make the meat the same temperature all the way through, but you're not gonna overcook it because it's never gonna take that temperature past that. And you don't have to worry about the outside being a different temperature to the inside. So now when you take the steak out, you're gonna see it's really ugly looking. It's like gray, it looks like old meat. That's just because of the way we've cooked it. And then when we throw it on the grill, and you can also do this on cast iron to get that nice little sear, it's gonna look like a perfect steak. But when you cut into it all the way through, it's gonna be that medium rare medium that you're looking for. Are you in self-imposed timeout? Why are you in your crate? Hey, Tabitha, you love being in there. Is that your home? Sit. 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 Down. Good girl. We are discussing the new Halloween movie that came out. Which Anthony says is horrible. It's not horrible. It's not as bad as, like, Halloween 3, 4, and 5, but... But it's a... A bridge movie. It's a bridge movie to the third one. And so sometimes those can be a little shaky because you're trying to connect stuff. And sometimes people, movies nail it. And sometimes they fall short of your hope. Are you like an 80s mummy? <laughs> well, I, I've got like a confusion going on. I, I want to be able to. You got to... a flower girl with an 80s hairdo. Well, this is a Dia de los Muertos headband is what it said on the thing. And I really just wanted to be clearly identifiable to all of the volunteers that might be there tonight. So they could be like, okay, I spot Miss Rachel. She's That's over there. That's never confusing. Well, you could usually hear my mouth, but in a sea of costumes, how are you gonna notice? So I was gonna be a pirate, but I thought, man, if I wear that eye patch for multiple, multiple hours and not just on keto on the couch, like I'm gonna have a line through my face are you ready to Maybe eat? Maybe forever. Yes. Okay, so you have two options. The prime rib is ready in the sous vide. I'm ready. We can uh, sear the entire thing as one big piece, okay. or we can slice it into steaks so that you have a sear all the way around your piece. I got to trust the chef on this one. Whatever your, your stomach is telling you to do. Anthony, what do you think? Sear one it. big piece of the prime rib there, which, by the way, you can have a piece, or... Cut it into prime rib steaks and then sear each piece individually. No, one big piece. Okay, here we go. You can go ahead and unplug that. Now we're gonna bring this over here. And I'm telling you, this is going to look disgusting. Right. Like a piece of rotten meat. It always does. The sous vide makes it like a gray color. There we go. Ugh, terrible. But we're gonna sear this and it's gonna look amazing. You guys still don't think we should cut it into steaks? Anthony, no? No. 
One big piece. I trust the chef. Get my keto chow silicone gloves on. <laughs> Don't burn yourself. That fire right now is at about 700 degrees. Oh my goodness. Here we go. Well, hello there, handsome. You ready? Ready. Look at how beautiful. Okay, here we go. Get the side. Look at how different it looks in just minutes. Oh, look at that fat right there. All right, that's my piece. These aren't the right tongs for that. That is gorgeous. Close this puppy up, save that charcoal. Are you ready? I am so ready, let's see. Oh wow, that is perfect. That is good and rare. I actually am gonna go sear my piece. I know you don't want yours seared. But no, I wanna sear mine, I think. You all said you didn't wanna sear the whole thing into steaks. I'm afraid that it might be too rare if I don't. But like literally. That is a perfect medium rare. Let's see what Anthony thinks. Maybe you were right. Oh my gosh, I have it on video. So after all that, they want me to sear them all the way through. Oh I feel like the cook knows, but you kind of have to assert yourself just a little bit. Like, I'm gonna go with my gut on this one. No one asks Gordon Ramsay, do you think we should go ahead and sear this? He just does it. Wow, look at that. Look at how fast. Now we can eat. Since we can't have our cheese on top, gotta add a little bit of flavor. Butter always consoles me. Look okay. at this. Not quite done yet. Since Ooh. we didn't smoke it, this is where the Redmond nice. smoked salt comes into place. Oh, wow. So this is the cherry flavored smoked salt. I think it's still out of stock, but they said they're going to be making more. Oh, wow. I smell it. It smells like a campfire. It smells so stinking good. I'll wait and dink it. Well, wait, I gotta cover mine with butter. Of course, Anthony's back here cooking shrimp and grass. I know, but you know what? I can stay on plan for sure if we're eating steak, right? That's not even like, it's not a distraction. It's not like if, if you're eating a bologna and someone else is eating steak. Dink. Mmm, wow. That, um, that smoked salt. Mm-hmm. Adds so much flavor. Wow. Now, people want to know, how do you get collagen? There you go. And when you sous vide this, and if you would let it go even longer, we only had it going for about five hours, uh, it actually gets more melty and melty and yeah. like where it gets like candy. Mmm. This is good. Wow. We're getting new knives, right? Our yes. knives are so sad. I but this fat, it's not that chewy gristle because you're slow cooking it, like, and you're using the sous vide. Yeah. So it doesn't have that that chewy gristle that you have to throw out. I mean, some people throw it out, like Bronson, but uh, that's that's where you're gonna get all your collagen. That's like delicious fat. That's what makes ribeye like the perfect food. It's one to one ratio as far as grams of fat to grams of protein. I am so glad that we found this treasure in in the um, freezer. Mm. This is so good. Mm. I'm just gonna enjoy it. So you, I have a bunch of videos to edit 
and uh, I'm gonna have to figure out some of the chickens because the older chickens are just bullying the baby chickens. I know, they can't even rest. And so now the baby chickens just don't go up in the coop. They go up in the coop when the older chickens come out of the coop. Do we think we need to do like a coop home Well, renovation? what I'm gonna do is on the, on the whole hen house, I'm going to build another box off onto the side. So they have the same gated hen house, but then at night there's two places for them to go to sleep and hopefully the babies go up into one, the other ones go up into the other one. That will be a very easy addition. So I'm gonna kind of plan that out and get that done. Fortunately, lumber prices They're are coming, coming down. down a little bit. Yeah. So this won't like require us to refinance the house for two sheets of plywood. Mm -hmm. um, but we've got to do something because I'm tired of going out at 9:30 at night and fishing chickens off of the roof. Well, and because I that's what they're doing. They're going up on the roof. Well, and I don't like our animals not feeling safe where they live. Yeah, so if we do it this way, everybody should have their own house and it shouldn't take me that long. And then Anthony convinced me to give them free reign of the grass. So we're gonna see if they tear up our grass. If not, they go back into confinement. Right. Uh, but we just cut the grass so they got a lot of fresh grass clippings. And the idea is we're gonna try to keep it a little bit longer and then they can go at it and then they won't dig as much because they have a lot of dirt to dig in anyway. So now they'll right. have grass and they have dirt. Uh, so we're gonna finish eating and then we'll check in with you guys later. Hey, I like that shirt. I do too. It, it speaks volumes of how the food goes in this house. Mm. How was the trunk or treat? It was so good. I couldn't take footage of anything because it was just wall to wall children and we can't use that video anyway right but we definitely had more than the 800 children that we were expecting so oh, wow. fortunately we just um were able to kind of make another run and bring in more stuff to right. give out because we're normally pretty generous anyway you know like we're heavy-handed with stuff and um yeah we were we were we were going through the treats and the toys and everything, but it was fun. They did like stage shows. Oh wow. With like fully dressed characters from like Beauty and the Beast and you know, Cruella DeVille. It was awesome. I think I had more fun though. I got to hang out in the Hungry Horde tonight. Mm. You missed it. Renee was a special guest. Yes, I totally guessed. And they were all dressed up. Even Heath was dressed up. What did a, they dress up like? Um, I'm not quite sure what Renee was. Some kind of skeleton thing. It looked like a zombie. I don't know exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, Shelly looked like a fortune teller, but she said she was a witch. Aww. And then Heath was wearing an Oscar Mayer uh, hot dog costume. There was so many cute and creative costumes. I was so impressed. There was one little boy that was a UPS delivery person. And so I had to just leave our booth and go and run and like, <laughs> you know, give him extra treats because I was like, hey, my dad was with UPS for 38 years before he retired. I, I, I love like UPS drivers. And so the mom said, cause he was only like three years old mm -hmm. and she was like, he was so specific about who he wanted to be for Halloween. He wanted to be a UPS truck driver. But you think about that, of all your like the cool you guys see you get them to see, yeah. Right. So he was like, that is his hero that rides up in this super cool truck. He even had a little tiny little package. Oh wow! It was so so cute. Well, I got yesterday's vlog edited, uploaded. So you just need to preview that. Right now, my computer doesn't work because I've erased the entire thing. So at some point, I need to reinstall everything. Are you scared? No, I can. I have backups of everything, but it just it takes a long time because there's so much data, and I'm trying to figure out how to like store more stuff because right now we delete a lot of raw footage because I just yeah. don't have room to store it. But you think you could but do I something with it? But I need that raw footage. Like I, I don't have any of the raw footage from like drone shots and stuff like that. Where you know you go back to the keys, you want to have just like stock drone footage well i've deleted all that because we needed to you know make space on the computer so i'm like re i'm in like investigating nas servers and stuff hey and i've been speaking to somebody about helping us fix up our website mm -hmm. so if you know anybody let us know because i'm looking for someone who not 
is going to charge me, you know, a hundred thousand dollars to redo our website. Right. It's a simple vlogging website, but clean it up, make it run more efficiently, make it look a little bit better. Like get rid of some of the ads that are popping up everywhere because I hate pop-up ads in the middle of recipes and things that. like that. I do that. I hate that too. And I can't figure out how to get rid of all that kind of stuff. So, uh, tomorrow I have a football game or four football games, but I'm in the afternoon. Anthony's in the morning. I have afternoon games. It's playoffs. And I just found out on Sunday, I have five lacrosse games. Wow. Yeah, so starting at the tournament, it starts at 8 a.m. in West Palm Beach. and then But I'm done by 1 o'clock. So that's the nice thing about lacrosse tournaments. Every game's only 45 minutes long, and you're done, and you're out of there. And, and I like it. Bang, 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 and, and we're done. And you'll be home in time to get changed into your raggedy Andy. I, I was just wearing this. We actually had... um. A football referee. Oh, A really? little tiny one, too. I was like, oh, I wish Joe was here to see him. <laughs> Super cute. Okay. Well, that is going to be the end of day 41 of the Beef Butter, 41. Bacon, and Egg Challenge. We just have, I guess, what, three more days. 42, 43, 40. I feel like we can't end on 43 or 44, but we are going to. Are we? Because Monday would be 44. Today's 41. Sunday's 42. Sunday's 43, so we didn't go 45 days. I, I'm sad because I, I, I wanted it to be 45 days We're getting our labs I'm done 45. on Monday, and we're planning on doing the the chicken wings on Tuesday. So We got to end this at some point. We got to end it at some point, but we are really going to stay pretty keto for. I, I, I'm, we're just enjoying this. I mean, Rachel's eating like two and a half pounds of prime rib today. so This is a good day. <laughs> she's, she's enjoying that. I'm having just, I just don't want a whole bunch of steak. I'm, I'm there's going to be the amount of hate that's going to uh -oh. show up in the comments down below on this what one. What you about to say? I'm not a ribeye fan. Get out. I'm just <laughs> not a ribeye fan. Now, I like prime rib, but even this prime rib, it's not cooked long enough for me. I need a prime rib that's cooked for like 24 hours. Like, I just want it like melt in your mouth. I more am into sirloins and top rounds and... and Picanha and stuff like that. I'm just not a huge, huge prime rib fan. I was telling... So I passed... I had my piece today and I passed the rest on to the boys. And even reheated because we cooked that nice and rare. I threw it onto the electric Blackstone because I didn't feel like going outside and starting everything. And now there's a propane shortage. I'm worried like we have to go fill all our propane tanks. We have like it's nine perfect. of them. It's perfect. But it got a nice sear on the outside. But it's still like a good medium good rare in, good all in, like, the way through the yeah. middle. So... I have, it up pretty well. I have learned in this challenge that it's not just ribeye, though, that I like. I like lots of cuts of steak, and I also want to make more roasts. Yeah. We did not grow up eating a ton of roasts. Right. That was, like, the only beef we ate when I was a kid because roasts were cheap. Mm -mm. We never ate that. We mostly ate ground hamburger, ground beef. Yeah. So yeah, I... We ate ground turkey. I'm, this is a happy discovery. Yeah, I'm enjoying the roast, and as so long as I get my end piece, you know, this little piece right here, I'm, I'm super happy because I like that char on the outside. Give me the fatty cuts. So, that's going to be the end of today's video, day 41, and if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm going to put right over here. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way, every single time I eat all the pork belly, you'll be alerted to it. Till tomorrow. Bye. Bye.